What's up, YouTube? Day 28 of the October Horror Movie Challenge. After today, I have three more of these to do. And it's just blowing my mind how fast October is going by. Um, I'm on my way to 100. With all the TV and film that I watched, um, I'm hovering around like the upper 80 mark. So, I mean, I'm right there. Um, hopefully on October 31st, I give you the breakdown of how I made it, if I made it into uh, above 100 and everything. And um, I mean, hopefully I do, but we'll see. Uh, today I got four films in. Two of them were uh, a special watch that something I've never done before or never watched before. Um, not the films. I've seen the films before, but the presenter of them. And I, I watched two Sven Gulli films. And uh, I didn't know that Sven Gulli was even on. I saw my father-in-law father post something about it, and uh, uh, I checked it out and everything. And I actually like it. I, I think it's cool for the monster host popping in there. I mean, Joe Bob Briggs was like, you know, me growing up, that was like the coolest thing ever, Monster Vision and everything. So it's cool to see that. But those two films, first one was uh, Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Now, I've seen this before. I watched it in a previous uh, October Horror Movie Challenge. So it wasn't anything new to me, but just seeing it and how classic it is. I mean, it, it's universal horror films. You get Bela Lugosi reprising the Dracula role. I mean, you just get so much cool stuff in it. Plus, you get Abbott and Costello, whose comedy is kind of like timeless. You know, it's up there with like <clears throat> Buster Keaton and the Three Stooges. Just this higher level of comedy that still, 60 years later, translates. It still works. And uh, it's very cool. And like I said, the Sven Gulli edition of it where he's popping in and he'll give facts about the film or he'll, he'll poke fun at something. Just very cool to see. Um, in, in the future, I'm gonna just watch even after the October Movie Challenge it comes on Saturdays on on um, Me TV, which for me is Channel Three. So I mean, I'll be checking it out. Uh, Evan Costello easily seven out of ten. Second film I watched was the original Thirteen Ghosts. I thought I'd seen this, but I must have saw um, House on Haunted Hill and or yeah, House on Haunted Hill and thought I saw Thirteen Ghosts. Probably because like. And all those remakes all came around at the same time. So probably the original, I probably put them together in my head. So I've never actually seen 13 Ghosts, the original. So catching it was actually pretty cool to see. Also Sven Gulli edition. So it was also cool to get the facts and stuff with him with that. But um, better movie than I, th I thought. And I actually like it better, obviously, than the remake. I, which I, I, I like the remake of 13 Ghosts. I think it's a guilty pleasure. I think a lot of people will crap on it. But to me, it's not that bad of a movie. I, I really... It, I think it's a fun uh, movie, one of those like late 90s horror films and everything. So definitely something uh, cool. The original though, like I said, I mean, it's nothing like too scary or anything. Probably for like people in that time period, it was, it was freaky. And of course you had the, the William Castle, you know, uh, gags and, and gimmicks of wear these glasses if you want to see the ghost, but you can take them off if you're too scared, you know, which is cool. Uh, 13 Ghosts for me is a 6 out of 10. Um, third film I watched was... Marrowbone, um, which was the pick of the day. Now, this was a, a slow, like, slow build horror film. Um, I liked it. It was a little, like, it was, at some points, it was a little too slow. Like, at some points, I was like, is this a horror film? Like, you know, or am I just watching like, a drama period piece? But it just, it, it, it works for its creepiness. It's got that same vibe of, like, the innkeepers or, um, I don't know, just like where movies are creepy, but like there's nothing that's overly like just very like scary. It just there's a creepiness to the film and everything. Best part about it is the acting. Acting is just downright phenomenal on it. And it's like I said, it's a slow burn movie and it's a it's a little slow watch, but you're rewarded for watching. I mean it, it definitely is it definitely I don't want to say like it ramps up, but it like it keeps your interest, you know? So Marabone's a six out of ten. Fourth movie of the day I watched was something I recorded off TV, and I, n I never even heard of this film, uh, but it, it starred um, uh, Boris Karloff, so I wanted to check it out, and that was uh, The Sorcerers, and uh, a film about Boris Karloff and his wife are able to, like, get into the body somehow, I guess, body or soul of these younger couples, and they can, like, live life through them, even though they're older and everything, and it's just kind of like one of those bonkers, late 60s, early 70s type movies. I mean, Boris Karloff being in just is awesome. Um, I don't know if he was doing it just for like a payday, but, uh, you know, adding his name to the list makes it like pushes it up a little bit in my mind. Um, nothing like overly like cool and all. Like there's a couple like scenes, but there's, there's no scares or anything in the film. It's just kind of like one of those weird like genre, like, I don't know. It just, 
it's not a scary film per se, but it's it's a cool film. It has a couple like kills in it and everything. You, I mean, you're watching it for Boris Karloff at this point. You know, seeing him in his later years, uh, it's not as good as like him in, in uh, Black Sunday or Black Sabbath. For which one? Black Sabbath, I think he's in. Um, it's not as good as like his acting or his his presence in those films. But I mean, it's still Boris Karloff. It's still one of like the the goats of the horror genre. So. Uh, five and a half out of ten it like it wasn't the best made film i also had a bad quality uh, uh copy of it so i mean that might play into it a little bit but anyway four films in like i said with my tv counting you know for horror shows and everything and my horror movies i'm hovering right around that that 88 89 like i don't even know what the, right now because i haven't even filled out my list i i always like write down what i'm watching i keep my stats and stuff and then i'll go update my my list like at the end of the week or something so i'm right around that 80 mark and everything so hopefully i make it you know it's gonna be a push a serious push um i could even be off i might be a little higher than i think i am but we'll see so until then i'll catch you on the flip side